But there is a Harvard economist that disagrees with that. He just took a million dollars out of Bank of America, and he said he's probably going to go ahead and create a bank run on Bank of America because of that. Now, this is a Burnham. He's an ardent critic of the Fed. He writes, why do I risk starting a run on Bank of America by withdrawing my money and presuming that many fellow depositors will read this and rush to withdraw too? Because they pay me zero interest. Now, Burnham explains that Bank of America may be unwilling or unable to return his money should one of a number of different circumstances arise, such as depositors demanding their money back en masse, or if the investments of which 90% of depositors' money Bank of America has loaned out to cover go bust. So, I mean, here's this guy. He's got a million dollars in the bank. And basically, it'd be better off if he just stuck that money in, under his bed in a mattress because when he goes to take it out, the bank will put these capital controls on it and say, I'm sorry, we need that to cover these risky investments that we made with your money that we pay you zero interest on. Silly American, what were you thinking? But in addition, he points out that the FDIC, which everyone feels so secure, you know, putting their money in the bank because they guarantee to insure deposits up to $250,000. He points out the FDIC only has about $41 billion in reserve against $6 trillion in insured deposits. So, I mean, you can do the math there. Now, this Harvard economist, he pins the blame on... The government intervention, and specifically Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve for pursuing absurd quantitative easing policies, he says it's going to unravel in the U.S. as it has every other time it has been tried, from Weimar Germany to Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. Now, another elite insider also agrees with Burnham. He was one who predicted the massive economic crash in 2012. He says now that there's a very large probability that the real end of the world scenario might come March 4th, 2014. He says the doomsday clock will ring then because the U.S. economy may fully crash around that date, which will in turn bring down all world economies and all hope of any recovery for the foreseeable future. Now, he predicts that interest rates will skyrocket, businesses will fail, unemployment will go to record levels, of course, material and food shortages and major social unrest. Now, he goes on to say that any wishful thinking that America is in a recovery and that things are getting better is an illusion because a run on the bank would start suddenly, but it would snowball, build very quickly, and the rest of the world would fully crash along with us. Now, this collapse is also noted by the U.S. Treasury Department, who agrees, and they say that if the U.S. government doesn't raise the debt ceiling, it's going to have a generational effect, meaning that a depressive economic environment could last for our entire lifetimes, which is very frightening. Now, who knows if it's going to happen around March 4th or whenever, but all I can say is that there are some major economists and the U.S. Treasury, I don't really believe anything they say, but some other major economists are saying we need to be prepared for this. Something is happening. And if Burnham's words don't send a chill down your spine, they definitely should send a chill through the markets. We have seen the Dow Jones fall a thousand points. And this has been since the, its height in December, which we haven't seen it fall more than 200 points uh, in over a year. I mean, that's its moving average. So many believe that this is just the beginning of a major stock decline. Now, Peter Schiff says the crisis is imminent. I don't think Obama is going to finish his second term without the bottom dropping out. A stock market, there, the investors there are oblivious to these problems, and the global financial markets are also becoming extremely unstable. Now, for anyone who doesn't believe that we could see civil unrest here in America, like what these economists are talking about, just take a look at what happened in Seattle. People there were lighting things on fire, burning historical buildings, damaging buildings, throwing down street signs, going crazy because their team won the Super Bowl. I mean, they were acting crazy because of good news. Now, imagine what they would do, how the average American would behave if there was a total economic collapse and no one could find any jobs or any income for an extended period of time. 
Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. 